<laughs> Such a mind job, these Buddhas for noble truths. <laughs> but the funny thing about them is that even if you are unable to fully comprehend them intellectually, there is something inside all of that that somehow rings true. There is something inside us that resonates with those ideas and concepts. And most of them can be easily grasped by your intellectual mind. So, for example, that all your suffering comes from your desires, from your attachment and from your resistances. And your mind can even accept the ridiculous idea <laughs> that all that will change for a better if you just sit quietly for 15 minutes a day. At least, if you know why do you are doing that. And you are doing that in order to shift your perspective. To really know, not just understand, but to really know that your thoughts and your emotions and your body sensations and even your body is not something that you are, but something that you have. And by being a witness, by pulling yourself a little bit out of the frame, taking a bird eye view, zooming out, by zooming out on your life, you can take a well, better perspective of witness, of observer of all the drama, and not to get too much involved into that drama. But from my experience of teaching this stuff, <laughs> I know that there is one thing inside all of that that is completely unacceptable to our intellectual mind. And that is the idea that by removing our suffering, our attachments and our resistances, somehow we will be blissfully happy and have deep inner peace and joy and even enlightenment. And that somehow joy flows naturally through you once you removed your resistances to what is. <laughs> And the reason why our mind is unable to comprehend that idea is because we were all conditioned, collectively and individually, into believing in Newtonian physics. And Newtonian physics says that every cause has a certain reaction. Or, if you want to take it from the other way around, if you want to have certain consequence or reaction, you need to take some action. You need somehow to create at least circumstances that are going to make you happy or joyful or peaceful or whatever vibration that you are aiming at. And what Buddha says is that it's actually the other way around. Just by removing what you are not, by finding out what your attachments are and what your resistances are, and by removing them, removing obstacles to your happiness, you will be blissfully happy because happiness is your natural state. So, that idea is unacceptable to our rational mind. And there is no way to explain it intellectually. However, the good news is, <laughs> there is a way to find that out for yourself through experiment or through some experience. And we will now suggest to you a kind of, well, let's say, game. <laughs> you can say it is a homework, but find a better word. You know, you don't want to work at home. How about home joy? <laughs> or home fun? Or home exploration? Or home investigation? Find something that resonates with you, that makes you excited. And then, just do this game or experience that we will now propose, and it will shift your life profoundly. And you actually need to do it only once, successfully. Maybe you're not going to be able to do it at first attempt, but second or third. And it will take maybe 20 minutes. And it is the most efficient thing to do to really know 
not just understand, but know that all of this has some merit to it. Okay. So, this is what you are going to do. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Find a place somewhere where people are passing by. And don't choose a spot where it's too crowded, but, for example, where you can focus on any particular person walking by for half a minute. So, for example, public park is a great place, but also it can be a shopping mall. It's fine. Wherever you can sit quietly without being disturbed and watch people passing by. Now, this is the kicker. You will sit there and try to look people without any judgment. Without any judgment at all, without even having one single thought about them. And at first, it will be much more difficult than you expect because your mind will go into judging mode immediately. <laughs> and what your thoughts are going to be, of course, that depends on your own attachments and resistances, but never mind that. Remove any thought. So, for example, pretty girl is passing by. And now, depending if you are male or female, you can have kind of thoughts, let's say, mm, she's really pretty, or she's too young, or she looks really stylish, or where did she get that bag? <laughs> Remove all thoughts. Just watch them passing by without any, any judgment at all. And you will soon notice, pretty soon, that this one is too young, this is too pretty, this one is too ugly. And also, you will notice that some of those people will trigger inside you emotional response that you probably didn't expect. So, maybe an old lady will come passing by you and you will immediately be in a state of anxiety, for example. Why? Well, that's topic for another day. Maybe it will trigger your own insecurities and fears about getting old or about um, not being able to move properly. But that all doesn't matter. You will watch people passing by without any judgment, any thought at all. And it will take you maybe 20 minutes in the first attempt to get to that state. Some judgments will not be even formulated into a thought. So, maybe someone will pass by with a cigarette in his hand. And no thought will come, but somehow <laughs> you have some attitude of resistance toward the idea that people are still smoking. You know, somehow we are better than that. Especially if you are an ex-smoker. <laughs> and that's one of your own attachments and resistances, too. But never mind that. This experiment is not about your own attachments or your, or your own resistances, although if you find some of them, that would be great. But to just watch people passing by without passing absolutely any judgment at all. And this is really important. Do not project positive feelings towards them. So maybe you will see someone who is kind of repulsive to you, and you may feel that the purpose of this exercise is to send him happy thoughts, you know, I love you, I like you, and so on and so on. But no. <laughs> the purpose of this exercise is exactly that, to watch people without any judgment. Without any judgment. And you will notice that once you start to get into that state, things inside you are going to start to move and shift in a really unexpected way. So, first, you are going to feel, in, well, relaxed. And I'll tell you why. 
Have you ever wondered why stargazing is so relaxing? And people believe that it is relaxing because, you know, you usually do it during the beautiful starry night and you're usually uh, in a nice setting when you're doing that. You're not watching stars when you're in a hurry or when you're in anxiety or when you're afraid. And so somehow you're conditioned when you look at the stars that you feel awe and some kind of deep, profound peace. But actually, that deep, profound peace and sense of relaxation are coming from the fact that by watching the stars, you are not judging them. You never ever look at the sky and then think, you know what? Sure, it's nice, but it would be better if this one was here. <laughs> no, of course not. You watch stars without any expectations, without any judgment. And that's why it's so relaxing. And somehow it is a kind of deep, profound experience, although it's impossible to explain why. Okay? In the same way, when you are sitting at the seashore, watching waves on the ocean, you don't judge them, right? You don't point finger and, ah, that wave is so-so, oh, this one, this one is great, mm, this one is beautiful. <laughs> Even if some wave is different than the others, maybe a little bit bigger, you don't think better of it, <laughs> nor worse. Or like walking through a forest. So you walk through some woods, forest, and there are a lot of trees around you. And you don't judge. You don't point fingers and say, you know, this tree is beautiful, this tree is okay, it could be better. Oh, this one is huge, it's great. <laughs> it's not about size. It's not about the quality of it. Unless you are in a lumber business. <laughs> but that's another <laughs> kind of situation. <laughs> You just watch those trees without any expectations, without any judgment. And each of those trees is beautiful in of itself. Although this one could be larger and this one could be straighter, <laughs> and this one could be greener, that doesn't matter. All of those trees are in a way perfect. They are not perfect as in they couldn't be any better, but they are what they are. When you don't judge things, you will see that there is an inner calm and peace and profound, well, you can say relaxation, but it is, it is more that it is an awakening of your wisdom that just accepts everything. And even if you see someone in the public park, let's say, that you are watching people, and that person is doing something that you really don't approve, so maybe he is yelling at his kid or maybe he is hitting his dog, and you don't approve that kind of violence, okay? maybe something will there will be some resistance toward that situation, because that situation shouldn't be like that. When you observe that without judgment, you will understand that that person yelling at his own kid, for example, is doing that because he is in pain, he is in suffering, he is in agony, he is projecting his own fears toward that kid or that dog. And you will feel empathy and understanding toward that situation, even love. Now, there is a very important thing to point out here. We are talking about real love, not about liking something. Do you know what's the difference? When you like a flower, you see a flower somewhere and you like it, you are going to pluck it and then even decorate yourself with that flower. So it's all about you. <laughs> you like that and you want to be prettier. You want to use it in some way. You want to have it. It is a kind of possession. But 
If you really love that flower, you're going to water it. You're going to help that flower. You're not going to use that flower. So sit quietly and watch people without any judgment. And you will know that you well, received your lesson or at least understood what that was all about when you really understand on a deep level this profound quote or message from Dalai Lama. And he said, love is the absence of judgment. That's all there is to it. When you remove, when you eliminate all judgment toward people that are passing, when you look them like you look fishes in the aquarium or stars at the sky or waves in the ocean or trees in the forest, you will really understand what true love is. And that is the beginning of true wisdom that we are really going to put into use from the next chapter forward. But in the meantime, don't think about how this experiment is silly. Just do it. Go there. Watch people without any judgment. Take your time. Maybe it won't be in the first attempt. Take your time. And don't project anything positive. Just be neutral. And if Buddha was right, if he was right, and now you have a way to check it out for yourself, please don't take anything for granted. <laughs> if Buddha was right, you should feel joy and true love and even beginning of deep inner peace and wisdom within you.